The most important thing you need to know to understand theoretical physicists natural units. What are natural units? Natural units are commonly introduced by setting Planck's constant equal to the speed of light equal to Boltzmann's constant equal to 1. That is, of course, nonsense. What it means is that we use units expressed by h bar c and kb and then just not write them. For example, Consider a velocity that is half of the speed of light. We just write V equals one half. Or consider an entropy that is KB times the logarithm of 2 to the n. We just write S equals the logarithm of 2 to the n. Or consider an action that is H bar omega t. We just write omega t. Now what does that mean? Let's look only at the dimension of quantities to understand it better. A velocity we have seen has now a dimension of 1. But a velocity is a length over time, so this means the length has now the dimension of a time. This is what you would expect since you can use the speed of light to convert a length into a time. Now let's look at h bar omega t. This is just an energy times the time, and it's now dimensionless. So this means an energy has a dimension of the inverse of a time, and that is an inverse of a length. Now consider the mass share relation e squared minus p squared c squared equals m squared c to the fourth. Setting c equal to 1, this tells us that an energy has the same dimension as momentum, has the same dimension as a mass. And finally, let's have a look at the temperature. The temperature times Boltzmann's constant is proportional to the average kinetic energy. Setting Boltzmann's constant equal to 1, this means that an energy has the same dimension as a temperature. Taken together, this means a temperature has the same dimension as an energy, has the same dimension as momentum, has the same dimension as mass, and that's the inverse of a time, and that's the inverse of a length. Now let's have a look at the Planck scale. The Planck length is the Compton wavelength associated to the Planck mass. So that means mp times c equals h bar over lp. Setting c and h bar equal to 1, the Planck length is just the inverse of the Planck mass. For Newton's constant, this means that g is just the inverse of 1 over mp squared. It is important to note that we can always reinsert the units when the dimension of the quantity is known. For example, consider the Schwarzschild radius of a black hole. In natural units, it's 2m over mp squared. Putting h bar and c back in, we can convert it into its normal form. Now let's look at a simple example, sunlight. The spectrum of our sun is nearly thermal and peaks at yellow at a wavelength of about 500 nanometers. A wavelength is the inverse of a frequency. That corresponds to a surface temperature of about one half electron volt at 500 Kelvin. Another example, subatomic particles. An atom has an extension of about one angstrom. Its substructure can be tested with gamma rays of energies exceeding the inverse of an angstrom, which is about a kilo electron volt. A proton has an extension of about a Fermi. Its substructure can be tested at collision energies exceeding roughly the inverse of a Fermi, which is something like a giga electron volt. Now you know everything you need to know about natural units. If you like what you've seen, visit us at backreaction.blogspot.com.